popular guy. The greatest cage fighter since Iron Fist. Welcome to Fictional Fatalities, a podcast where I discuss fictional killers in a true crime style setting. This episode is all about the masked fighter Vega from the Street Fighter video game series. As I was writing this, I was getting confused and I was thinking that his full name was Savio Vega, but it turns out that's actually a Puerto Rican wrestler from the 90s. Uh, Shout out to Savio Vega. He was the man who beat down Stone Cold Steve Austin and Dwayne The Rock Johnson, shutting down both wrestlers' undefeated records. He's another talented fighter, just like the Street Fighter Vega, and since this is a podcast about fictional killers and not about amazing wrestlers from the 1990s, let's get started with it. Born on January 27, 1967 in Spain, Vega is the fifth brightest star in the sky and the brightest of the Lyra constellation. Several of Vega's moves are named after these, like the Stardust Drop or the Cosmic Heel. Now, did you know that Savio Vega the wrestler was originally named Quang and was later renamed? Vega also went through a name change. In the Japanese release of the game, Vega was originally named Balrog, the boxer Balrog was named M. Bison, and M. Bison was first named Vega. Balrog the boxer is modeled after Mike Tyson, and fearing a lawsuit when released in the United States, the game makers decided to change the name from M. Bison, which was too close to Mike Tyson, to Balrog. Balrog was changed to Vega, and Vega was changed to M. Bison, which is how we all know them from the North American version of the game. Vega is a tall, handsome man with long hair braided in a ponytail. Depending on the game, his hair can be brown, black, or blonde. His standard outfit is that of a matador, allowing him to easily move around and adding to his agility and dexterity. Vega the character was originally planned to be a knight wearing a full set of armor, but was later changed to be a fighter from a different part of the world instead of a different era and time. He did, however, keep the mask and the sharp metal claw, which is called a Teko Kagi, I think? A similar weapon to the Teko Kagi was used by Geki in the original Street Fighter, which has led some fans to believe that Vega received some training from Geki, but nothing was ever confirmed on this. His final design was modeled more after a Spanish ninja similar to the nameless Asura from the Fist of the North Star series who was known for his agility, mask, bladed weapons, and braided ponytail, which basically perfectly describes Vega. He is also one of the only characters in the series to always have a weapon with him, and he is the only character in the series to wield the Tech Okagi. Personality-wise, Vega is vain, he's overconfident, and takes pleasure in seeing the ugly murdered or mutilated. The mask that he wears is just another layer of this narcissism, wearing it not to conceal his identity, but to protect his face from scarring or bruising for battle. To preserve his perfect face as he sees it. He only removes the mask after battle to posture and pose for the crowd. Vega's ego is endless and even dominates the way he decorates his home portraits of himself throughout the house. Although Vega is a cold-blooded killer who enjoys every aspect of it, he has also been described by many as intelligent and sophisticated, adopting more elegant and gentlemanly mannerisms attributed to his noble background. Going into Vega's background, he was born to a privileged noble family in Spain. For reasons unknown, his family status dwindled and Vega's beautiful mother was forced to remarry for financial security. Vega's mom was basically a gold digger. He didn't like his stepfather at all and thought that the man was ugly and didn't deserve his mother. As Vega grew up, he studied bullfighting and later went to Japan to study his other passion, which was ninjutsu. This explains his matador-inspired fighting costume, which is both beautiful in design, but also allows Vega full mobility and emphasizes his speed and agility. He didn't like his stepfather at all and thought that the man was ugly. As Vega grew up, he studied bullfighting and later went to Japan to study his other passion, ninjutsu. This explains his matador-inspired fighting costume, which is both beautiful in design, but also allows Vega full mobility and emphasizes his speed and agility. Combining bullfighting and ninjutsu, Vega thought of himself as a seasoned fighter and joined an underground fighting club. Naturally, he quickly became one of the best fighters there. Years later, his stepfather murdered his mother because he felt she did not respect him and was only with him for the money. 
They don't go into any detail at all about Vega's youth in the game series, but they did release a short film called Matador, which you can find on YouTube, and it's a gritty drama that focuses on Vega's traumatic upbringing, which led to him becoming the fighter and assassin that we know today. From the short film, it's only about 15 minutes long, so you can burn through it really quickly if you're a big Vega fan, which I'm assuming you are because you're listening to this episode. We can see that Vega's mother and stepfather are arguing at the beginning, and his stepfather gets physically abusive. Vega looks to be around age 10 at the time here. He's shown looking over old photos of matadors that his stepfather had tried to burn in the fireplace. Afterwards, his mother is shown packing bags, and the two leave and go to the Church of Mercy located in Barcelona. It doesn't say how much time passes here, but I'd have to guess and say it's maybe a few days, but either way, the priest invites Vega's stepfather to the church in an attempt for them to reconcile. Vega's mother wants nothing to do with his stepfather anymore, and a fight ensues. The priest is knocked to the ground, and the fight makes its way to the second floor with Vega following behind. With his stepfather choking his mother, Vega runs and shoves him out of a window, but he takes Vega's mother out the window with him. The fall kills his mother, but his stepfather survives. Vega stabs him with what looks to be a small Teco Kagi killing him. This is the incident that twisted his mind and created the Vega of today. Graceful and honorable nobleman by day and sadistic killer by night. This was the event that solidified in his mind the idea that beauty was heroic and to be desired, while ugliness was weakness and evil. By the end of the short film, Vega returns to kill the priest of the church wearing his trademark mask, matador costume, and Tech Okagi, leaving behind a red rose on the body. The murder of his mother began a brutal rampage in a career as a professional assassin, killing hundreds of people internationally, which caught the eye of criminal leader M. Bison, who was head of the Chateau. One of those victims was actually Chun-Li's father. Bison took Vega in as his personal assassin and one of his three Grandmaster bodyguards. The other bodyguards being Balrog and Saget, who was replaced later on by Fang. Fang is a very thin and tall man with medium-length black hair tied in a ponytail and a thin goatee. He's the second in command of Shadaloo, only under Bison. If you remember, Balrog is the boxer that was inspired by Mike Tyson. Vega became a high-ranking henchman for Bison and the Chateau on the promise he would be able to reap his particular brand of torture on anyone who he deemed ugly. When he was put in charge of Chateau's assassination missions, Vega was never told how to do his job because Bison knew that Vega enjoyed every moment of it and he would do a better job left to his own devices. Vega never failed to find and assassinate the target in some artistic fashion. It was Vega's creativity and maliciousness that Bison admired, but not nearly as much as he valued Vega's loyalty. Over the years, Shadowloo would come and go, sometimes they would disappear, sometimes they would resurface. Anytime they shut down, Vega would go right back to his normal life, fighting and killing, but he would always rejoin the ranks again whenever they resurfaced. So a little bit more information about the Shadowloo, since they're the reason why Vega is in the Street Fighter series to begin with. In Street Fighter 2, Shadowloo isn't named at all, but it's simply referred to as a mysterious crime organization. The literature available only went into the ranks and members listed by seniority. This is when we find out that M. Bison is the leader. We also learn that their main base is located in Thailand, somewhere near Bangkok, because that's where they hosted the Second World Warrior Tournament. The four heavenly kings are the final bosses, with M. Bison being the last one. The four heavenly kings are Bison, Vega, Balrog, and Saget, who was later replaced by Fang. At first, Shadowloo came across more like smugglers more than anything else, and as more games were made, more information came out regarding Shadowloo. The crime organization appeared to be paramilitary with powerful capabilities, far from the smugglers like they originally thought to be. Shadowloo bases were confirmed in Thailand and Brazil, and Bison was shown to have advanced technology and weapons as well as a team of scientists dedicated to creating things like cyborgs, clones, mind control rays, and the Psycho Drive, which was created to develop a perfect body for Bison. Bison also uses the Psycho Drive to channel negative energy for his Psycho Power move. 
As time goes on, Shadowloo is defeated and comes back each time with a different plan for power. Uh, sometimes they come back under a different name. Since the fall of the original Shadowloo, it is assumed that Vega has returned to his lifestyle as a contract killer pretending to be a rich and noble aristocrat. Vega's debut was in 1991 as one of the four Heavenly Kings and became a playable character in Street Fighter II Champion Edition and all games beyond that. He reappears as playable character in games like Street Fighter Alpha 3, Street Fighter EX2, and EX3, the Capcom vs. SNK series, Super Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter X Tekken, and Street Fighter 5. Vega has appeared in the animated and live-action series, most notably from the 1994 Street Fighter movie, where he is played by actor Jay Tavere and is Saget's assistant. In the movie, he fights Ryu in a cage match and is interrupted by Guile, who arrests him, Saget, Ryu, Ken, and pretty much most of the audience who is watching the cage fights. But of course, in the movie, they're able to escape jail. Him and Ryu fight again later on in the movie, where they're pretty much evenly matched, but Ryu wins by burning Vega's face on an oven. This is a character that fans seem to absolutely love. Vega was voted 5th in Capcom's poll of 85 characters for the 15th anniversary Street Fighter, making him the most popular male character. IGN ranked Vega at number 10 in their top 25 Street Fighter characters. Game Daily ranked him at number 12 in their top 20 Street Fighter characters of all time. He was 28th in a worldwide Street Fighter character poll held between 2017 and 2018. In 2013, Games Radar included him in their top 30 best Capcom characters of the last 30 years. And that is the story of Vega of the Street Fighter video game series. When I was playing him as a kid, this was always one of my go-to characters just because of his speed and that badass claw. If I wasn't picking Vega, I was probably going with Blanca just because that electric attack was rage quit material. You can find the socials at Fictional Fatal on Twitter. You can go to patreon.com slash fictional fatalities podcast. Or you can email directly to fictional fatalities podcast at gmail.com. If you enjoyed this, it would really help if you would leave a review on iTunes or just spread the word to your friends. I'm going to end this episode with Savio Vega's intro theme. Thanks a whole lot for listening. <laughs>